welcome back to another video on my channel so in today's video I'm going to be doing a poly gel overlay this client has come back and she's got a little bit of poly gel a thin layer still on her natural nail and this client she is a hairdresser so if you see any marks on the nail that is just hair dye and all kinds of things like that so I'm going in with a layer of pH bond first to dehydrate the nail plate and then going in with pro bond to every nail and as you can see there I just dabbed a little bit off the key with pro bond is less is more if you apply it to the nail and it looks wet you've applied too much and it will probably promote lifting rather than helping your product stick to the nail so after applying that I'm ready to go in with my poly gel. I'm using natural clear today just prepping my brush in the slip solution the brush I'm using is the gelish oval 10 brush it has the brush on one end and then it has the spatula for as you can see squeezing and then slicing the product off so after slicing a bit of poly gel off and now I can tell you right now I applied way too much for this little baby finger I always feel like when I start a set I apply too much to begin with I mean I'm still learning I would say every nail tech still learns I learn every single day and to say that I'm not still learning or don't want to keep learning would be a lie I'm still not where I want to be I don't think you ever can be I think that you can never stop learning in this industry there's so much to learn new products this is a reasonably new product and I'm still getting to grips with how much to slice off for how much of a certain bead size I need for each nail but it's no problem I can just file away or I can just remove a bit and move it onto the next nail which is great so there's no waste but yeah I'm not where I want to be yet but I'm hoping to keep improving with all my nail work. It's so going on to the second nail, just applying that bead right at the top half of the nail. I use that spatula to just push it to either side slightly. I dampen my brush with the slip solution. I always do the cuticle area first, so making that really nice and flush. Then I move my brush down to the right hand side of the side wall, getting that nice and flush and then to the left hand side getting that nice and flush in that side wall. I find that that really helps to keep that product in the middle of the nail, keeping it in that stress area and that apex area. And then I go in and then I bring the rest of the product down the nail. I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of frame here. So going in again, squeezing, slicing, applying it onto the nail, pushing it to either side, wiping off, always wiping off, my brush and my spatula keeping it nice and clean so what I find is when I know I need a bit more slip solution on my brush is you'll find that the brush will start sticking or separating as you saw there that means it needs a little bit more slip be careful not to apply too much because that can also promote lifting if it touches the nail plate so you can see a little pesky bit of glitter I had to get out so smooth that back out bring the product down the rest of the nail length making sure I'm neatening up those edges that I haven't got any hanging bits of poly gel or anything like that So going on to the next nail, I've left this one in real time so you can see how fast I work. I definitely would like to be a lot faster but as this is one of my newer systems to work with, I'm mainly a gel tech and acrylic So and I do a lot of gel polish as well so poly gel is definitely new to me but I'm absolutely loving it. I'd love to know what you guys think down below if you've tried poly gel, what are your thoughts on it? how are you finding it um my clients the one that have the ones that have tried it absolutely love it they're coming back with amazing results and they're loving it so yeah i'm really enjoying working with it but as you can see there i'm just cleaning off my brush 
when I dip it into the slip solution I do wipe off one side of my brush because I find if you go straight from the slip solution onto the nail you've got way too much on your brush and all that liquid floods the cuticle area onto the client's skin and you just don't want to be putting all that product on the client's skin. And once I've applied it to the whole nail, I always just check my angles, make sure I'm happy. You can always refine with filing, that's absolutely fine. But the better application you get now, the less filing you will have to do. So going into my filing routine, I've left a couple of nails in for you, side wall, side wall, free edge, because these are short, kind of soft almond shaped nails, I can do that free edge all in one sweeping motion, and then I'm just going over, because I applied a bit too much on this nail, and I was aware of that, I was just debulking slightly before going around that cuticle area. So going around that cuticle area now, just zooming in a little bit for you so you can see. It does look like I'm being quite rough here but I can assure you I'm not. Be quite gentle and bounce around that cuticle area and I'm always pulling back my client's skin with my fingers. And I don't know if you've noticed but I'm trying out gloves. I mean I have been trying out gloves for a while but because of my really long nails I don't find gloves that fit and they feel a bit weird. I'm trying to get used to them but yeah I'll let you know how I get on with those gloves. So just buffing over with a white buffing block and then using my little scrubby brush to get rid of any dust and moving on to the next nail. So again going over with my file around that cuticle area and then the whole surface of the nail, going in with my white buffing block to smooth it over. And then the reason why I use my little dusty scrubby brush is it gets rid of all that poly gel dust around the cuticle area and the side walls. And doing that, you can see if you're really, you've got it really flush around those areas, it really, really helps with application. So after I've done all those nails, I'm coming in and cleansing them all off, making sure my client's happy, and going in with Magpie Gel Colour Georgie Porgy. This is one of my favourite. It's a one-coater. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's so pigmented. Most of their colours are. But you can see here just how beautifully pigmented it is and creamy. And if you're watching my application, you'll notice you apply it slightly thicker with Magpie Gels. It is a pure gel formula. So by applying it this little bit thicker, you're getting that full coat and it does cure all the way through. I like to apply it just at the top half of the nail and then push it and butt it right up to that cuticle area and then pull the sides down, making sure it's nice and flush, capping that free edge and then the nail's done. Excuse my nails, I know they are so dry and they are really grown out, they really need to be done. And I'm a habit, I have a habit of biting the skin around my nails. I know, it's bad, I'm trying to stop. Yeah, New Year's resolutions. So after applying that gel colour, look how beautiful that is. One coat. Going into the amp for a half cure of 30 seconds. And then going in with Magpie Glitter Sidoni. Or Sidone. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I probably just butchered it. And going in with my Magpie Glitter Applicator Brush. And my client was just saying how fun it was. This is my one I use for filming and this is the one I normally use. You can see how well loved it is. They are really good brushes. I use them on every single client because most of my clients have glitter. So you can see how well loved it is. But she was just laughing at the fact that I had a nice shiny one for filming. <laughs> so I'm just applying that glitter around the cuticle area at first on every single nail just to get that glitter on
And once that's done, I just wipe off some of the excess glitter on my brush and then I go back to the start and I feather down that glitter. I find doing it this way, it's effortless doing a glitter fade. You just have to tap and it just brings some of that excess glitter down the nail. By the time you've got to the end, it's pulled all the glitter off and it's faded it down for you. Really, really easy, really quick to do, but really effective. Going in with my Magpie Glitter Duster brush. And again, this is my older duster brush. You can see how well loved it is. Need to give it a bit of a revamp and hopefully get some of those marks off. So dusting over, I dust around that cuticle area and then I also go around the side walls and the free edge making sure there's no glitter anywhere that can catch when you've got your top coat on and cause any chipping or anything like that. So going in with Let It Shine Top Coat from Magpie Beauty and I'll be applying two coats of this, curing for 60 seconds between each layer. And I forgot to mention, after I applied that glitter and dusted it off, I put it back into the lamp for a final cure of 30 seconds to fully cure that colour coat and then going in with my top coat. So again, applying it two layers, 60 seconds between each layer and then you're done. I like to float this first layer on, I find especially when you've got glitters and you want to encapsulate them in, floating is best and then you can apply your second layer in the normal method. So after those two coats I'm coming in with some cleanser, cleansing off that tacky layer. A good way to know if your top coat's cured properly, if it gives a good squeak when you're cleansing it. And then I'm just going in with that same scrubby brush and scrubbing off any glitter that's left on the fingers. Going in with my cuticle oil, rubbing that all in. My clients have the option where they want some hand cream as well. And then that's the finished result. Look at that sparkle. I really like this combination of glitter and gel polish. I think it looks really pretty, perfect for this fall, Christmassy, autumn time of the year. Look, they look beautiful together. Almost like snow falling down the nail. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Instagram account, Isabel May Nails, for more photos of all my nail work. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!